First of all, a small disclaimer, please do not try this at home. I'm a trained idiot with lots of experience being behind cars, either on my race bike or in a race convoy, and I've done it in training many times. All right, welcome back to another video. Last month, I attempted to hit 100 kilometers an hour on one of the steepest climbs in my region. I hit 103 kilometers an hour and averaged about 80 kilometers an hour down the descent which was just enough to take the Strava, which I thought was quite impressive, but my YouTube viewers were not satisfied. Some people were saying it was useless because it wasn't in miles per hour, it was in kilometers an hour, even though I'm from New Zealand and we use the metric system. Some people saying I could still go faster. These comments have been running over and over in my head, but one stood out. One comment said, try and hit 100 kilometers an hour motor pacing behind a car, and today we're gonna do that. I recently purchased this 2009 BMW station wagon, the perfect cycling team car. I'm hoping the larger boot will really help hide me and my bike behind the wind. The large window at the back of the station wagon means it's gonna be easy for me to communicate with the driver to tell them when I want to increase or decrease the speed. Now, even more important than the car is the terrain. I specifically selected my course. It starts with a short, steep downhill, which I reckon I could probably get up to about 60 to 70 kilometers an hour before we start the proper motor pacing. And then once you get to the bottom of that short descent, there's about 1.5 kilometers of dead straight flat road, which I'm gonna try and get up to 100 kilometers an hour. I believe that this challenge is more technical than it is like pure speed and power. It's really about how tight I can hold on to the back of the car and not losing it, and really just trying to get aero and sit down behind it as much as I can. It's also important the communication between me and the driver, like that they only increase just when I need them to, because if I drop off the back of the car, there's no way I'm getting back on. All right, so it's about 9 a.m. now. I'm gonna go get everything ready, get the bike ready, put the carbons on, have a bit of breakfast, and then we're gonna start the challenge. All right, so this is where we're gonna do this little 100k an hour challenge. So we're gonna start just up here, and there's a long straight here. We've somehow got a tailwind, which is gonna help a lot. Then we head down here to this little, um, and then just down there is the brow of the little climb. And it's about, I think, 300 meters down, and then we've got 1.5k of just dead flat road where we can try and max out the speed. So I didn't quite get the uh, 100k an hour. It's a lot harder than I thought and the wind it was actually Once I hit that 1.5k of just that flat bit the wind wasn't actually coming straight from the front It was actually coming from the side So if I wanted to get the 100k an hour, I kind of needed to sit like to the side of the car Which I couldn't really do so I think I got 79.2 or something kilometers an hour So basically I got 80k an hour on the flat motor pacing so a little wee way off 100k an hour I think I need to wait for a nicer day to try and hit the hundred but um yeah, it is what it is for today. That is gonna to be the end of today's video. The channel has been growing at an awesome rate, except I looked at my analytics the other night and 90% of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. And me and Lucky would really appreciate it if everyone that has not subscribed, go down, click that red button and subscribe to the Cycling Time YouTube channel. And like this video if you haven't already.